Mmm, I love it when my tokens are refreshed. And in case you didn't know, Google OAuth 2 access tokens only last for one hour. So what is a person left to do? So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you have already seen this Google OAuth 2.0 setup video and one of these YouTube API or Google Sheets API videos here on the channel. If you have not, uh, this you will still be able to benefit from this video, but parts of it just might not make as much sense, uh, specifically because we're dealing with an example where we are going to be working in this case with the Google Sheets API setup. So basically, if you recall from our previous video, or if you haven't, what we're doing here is we're hitting this authorize with Google, where we're taken into basically this standard flow, where we're going to authorize, let's see, here we can see the service, the Google Sheets, and so we'll continue. And what this does though, and what, we're, what I'm going to do in this video, this URL is actually a little bit uh, slightly hidden here, but basically it comes back with this code. And I'm going to grab this code, and right now, I'm, in those other videos, they've been set up to do, to show off how you might be able to test uh, these APIs and get set up with them. However, it's not exactly, the workflow itself is not really production ready. And why is that? Because, um, you know, I had to grab this code from this uh, this URL that, that Google sends back. And then if you check here and just, you know, this is what I have to do so far in order to get my current setup working, is I have to come over here, I have to enter this code in, into this uh, dynamic spot which is marked on private, which you'll want on yours. And so that a slight difference from the last video is you'll want to update this code so that this code is in uh, these angle, uh, angle brackets, pointy brackets, um, so that it's dynamic. And then we're going to reinitialize this call. And then here we can see access token, refresh token, a bunch of stuff, how long it lasts. It lasts for one hour. Pop this into uh, an editor just so I have it for, for reference. Okay, so... Now this came back from the API, and then we have an authorization token here. And right now, this authorization token, again, it's a little bit manual because this these previous videos are set up for testing. And this video uh, is going to show you how to do the refresh token, but it's also going to show how to not be so manual with this. And so you want to make sure that you have unchecked private here for this data call. So whether you're using Google Sheets, whether you're using any of the other Google uh, APIs that they offer of the hundreds of APIs, then you'll know how to uh, basically get your API call set up for that particular instance. But then also just note that for your authorization, you're going to see how to get the authorization working without this, you know, kind of intervention of going back in here, back here and adding that access token here. So let's see how we might do that. Over here on the design area, when we hit authorize with Google, you get this URL that it comes back with and there's a code in it. So we're gonna actually add a workflow here. That's gonna be a do when a condition is true. And so do only when get data from page URL for code is not empty. So when it's not empty, what we wanna do is we want to make changes to the current user and just set up a couple of data fields. So I've just called mine Google, uh, Google code, Google access token, Google refresh token, and also I've just noted down the when it's gonna expire. And so I actually jumped the gun with this, uh, with this make changes current user. The first thing we wanna do with that code, uh, because this code, we could get it from the URL, but what we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, find this exchange code, and then here we're gonna enter the code from our URL, So we just have that. And then that's gonna make that call. And then now we can actually have something back from that, which is going to be expires in, um, which is in seconds, 3599, basically 3600 is one hour. And then we'll also just grab the refresh token and then the access token. Cool, so now we have, we have this live access token for one hour, which we can use. And then we have this refresh token, which we'll hang on to. And the refresh token is, is basically the exact same as this code, except that um, it's usable for in the future, whereas this code is not. Um, so it turns out we don't even need this because we just pop that code into there and it's used very briefly. Okay, so 
now that we have this access token set up, someone can go and they can do this get Google Sheets data. And so this, this token is going to expire in one hour. But let's go ahead and put our current users, Google access token in. But we're gonna do this only when, so we're gonna run this only when the current date is less than the current user's token expiration. So that means that it has not expired yet. So if it hasn't expired, you can go ahead and get the data. But if it has expired, what we're gonna to wanna to do is, we're actually gonna to wanna to exchange a code. Well, no, we're gonna to wanna to, to to go and set up a, an extra API call. So let's go do that. And this extra API call is basically going to be this same exchange code, but it's going to be, I'm gonna move this down just so I have it closer to the next thing. So I'm gonna add another call. And this next call is also going to be a post. Exchange refresh token for an access token. Okay, so you can see here that basically this is very, very similar. And so we'll just add this, add this all back in here. And so the only difference here is that the grant type is refresh token and then this last parameter instead of code is going to be refresh token we might as well just change the label on this and then update that and okay so in this case what I'm going to do is because I have this from a previous call recorded down we'll take this refresh token just so we can get started here and we'll initialize this cool so we see that that worked that's amazing and then we can see that, so basically what this workflow will do, we'll go ahead and save that, um, is that when the, it's basically gonna work both ways. If we have the token, then cool, we'll get access to the stuff. If we don't have the token, we'll use it. If we don't have an active access token, we'll refresh it and we'll get a new one. And that's basically, so we'll look for this refresh. And so the refresh token here in this case is going to be the current users. So close. Current users, Google refresh token. And that's gonna be in the case where, we'll just say it is greater than Greater than, and if it happens to be equal to, then well, uh, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> okay, so, and then in this case, when, when, when we'll get a, this refresh token, We're gonna kind of, not exactly, cheat is not the right word. We're just gonna use this expression even though that uh, this token expiration, we do want to reset that as part of this. And so by going to the account, make changes to current user, we'll actually change this, but we'll do it only after this get Google Sheets data has already ran. And this one will run based on, so that's the one that will run based on, oh wait, that was, that was a copy paste. I hadn't finished with this one yet. And this one will run, yes, when it's greater than. But this time, it's going to be the result of step two's access token, which, uh, apologies for the switching back and forth here, if that confused anyone. But basically, let me run through this again. We have the access, the access token is active. 
That's what this expression means. If so, cool, we'll go ahead and run this. If it is not active, then we'll exchange our refresh token to get a new access token. This new access token comes with another expiration thing, but we're not setting that here until step four. We're just gonna go ahead and be like, cool, we got a token, we're gonna run it. And then because this condition and this condition won't really be, ever be true, I mean, there's like this slight split second there. Um, and, but I, it really, these things run so fast that, you know, in an hour's time that I think this is, this is a legit setup. So if we've gone and we've got the refresh token, then we'll just go ahead and use the result of that for that access token. And we'll also make updated changes to the user here. So their Google, their access token is going to be the result of step two's access token. And then their refresh token Sorry, not the refresh token. That's going to stay the same. Their their token expiration is going to be the result of step two's uh, no, no, sorry. It's going to be the current date and time. Plus the result of step two's expires in. Okay, and so that will basically get you to where you need to go with using a refresh token. Let's go ahead and try this out. So back on this uh, list, we basically, we've got this uh, inflation has happened, but not, but only moderately. And we'll go ahead and the first thing we want to do is we want to authorize with Google, which plops us into this normal thing where I selected the account that I want. And then I'm going to go ahead and have it bring us back here. So let's go and head over to our database and let's check for this demo person. Okay, so they got this access token. They have a refresh token and they have an expiration date. And this expiration date, so everything's looking good there. Now, if we hit the get sheet data over here in the sheet, uh, have slightly updated the data a little bit <laughs> and let's go ahead and see if it can grab that. So it's getting the sheet data. Cool. So we can see that everything was updated. So it passed that conditional, uh, that first one, and we have to wait an hour to see if the other one actually worked. And so coming back a little bit later to this, uh, to just to see these workflows in action after the access token has expired from earlier. So here we can see our token expired earlier this afternoon. And then we're going to come back and we're going to watch these workflows in action. Uh, 1326, let me just go ahead and put these, we'll just double all these. And then let's watch this in action in a step-by-step -step flow. So here we can see it's checking the current date and time compared to the earlier one. So in this case, it is not going to just go get the sheets data. It's going to be this one where the current date and time is greater than the expiration, which means token is expired. We need a new token. So it's going to run next. So it's going to go and exchange the refresh token for a new access token call. So here is our refresh token. We can see that that is, it comes back with that and that the result of that gets pushed into this uh, API call for the, the sheet data. It schedules the API call. Uh, the backend workflow that we had set up in a previous, um, you know, this is irrespective of this one, just whatever it is in your world that you are doing to make a call and process some things from a Google API. Uh, th again, this is all about the particulars of, <clears throat> excuse me, access and, and specifically the refresh token. So there we, we actually can see at the end of that workflow, we uh, re-updated the, the time for this, for this one. So if we refresh this, we can see that it has been updated as has been the access token itself. So this is a new access token. It's there for an hour. And then we see that our food fight supply list was doubled in price. And so regardless of whether the access token is uh, active or it is expired, you need to get a new one. These workflows will do it for you. And I want to point out though, real quick, is that during some of the testing, I 
found it better to split out this conditional at the button level rather than at this workflow level. So all I've done is uh, two things actually. I did this split out so if it is, I'll just show these off so that you can uh, just kind of copy and paste follow along. Current date and time less than the token expiration, meaning it is active. Then it just, you know, make whatever call you have based upon whatever access token you have from when you first got the access token uh, in, in back over in this step which is you know that the standard Google authorization thing as our final recap. Next, this uh, opposite condition when the current date time is greater, which means we're past the point of expiration, which means it's time to go get a new one. So then we take our refresh token, grab that for that ABI call that we set up in this video. Then we run this one and we use the result of step one. And then be sure, uh, this is some, something just to point out, that when we recall this, well, this is a particular one for this one. It might, might not exist in your world, but basically whatever it is that you're getting back from your API uh, here in these two, it's just that the results of the steps are slightly different. It's whatever call it is. And then obviously for this particular example, updating well and in yours, your world as well, definitely update your token expiration and your access token to your current user for the uh, for this branch of logic. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.